It is Wednesday, and we're with the head coach of the Abbotsford Heat, Troy G. Ward. Welcome, Coach. How are you? I'm good, thanks. We are set to rock our red come the weekend, a huge weekend with the OKC Barons. Uh, this was one that uh, maybe last year was divisional, but it was kind of hot. You battled for first a bit, but this is on the calendar this year. You knew this club was going to get some major talent with uh, how high the Oilers have been picking of late. What do you make of the matchup? Well, it's just another one along the way. I mean, to be honest with you, that's how we look at it. Obviously, I think there's some heightened awareness with the players they have and obviously a bunch of really good individual players. Um, they, like us, uh, even with some of our good individual players from Calgary, are trying to find the right mix and the right mold every day to, to just be successful as a group but at the same time develop these guys uh, so that when the NHL gets going, they're, they're ready to play. A pretty big uh, couple games expected, sellouts expected very soon to be announced in terms of no seats left available for the weekend. A few days down the road, you had a really good crowd on Friday, and you set a little record as well Thursday and Friday. You got the quickest start in franchise history, and two goals in three seconds, both shorthanded. This has been a nice little run. Yeah, it's been a good run. I'm real happy for the guys. I mean, they've been able to um, work extremely hard since we got here on, in late September in training camp, and uh, they've been able to stay at home quite a bit of this time, so I think they've got a, a unique bond. A lot of times in hockey we say, well, you know, the best way to bond is an early road trip, and, and we've kind of went the other way. We've taken our home time, and we've made it the best we can, and and so we've gotten off to a good start. As far as those, you know, records on the weekend or, you know, off to a good start, that's, that's a product of the guys. They're a good group. They listen well, and, and they're working really hard. Um, the goal thing is, you know, it may never be ever in our life again. We see that, like, especially shorthanded. Um, and then not to mention, I thought the, the ironic twist of the whole thing was, was those two goals went in within a three-second time frame, and I, Mike Murray was here from the league office, and I said, Mike, maybe we should look at the timing of that. Maybe it was actually two seconds. <laughs> maybe it was four. Like, I don't know. Maybe it was operator error, but it's so important, like, because it's a stat that will probably not be changed for many, many years. And then I thought the ironic part was the next drop of the puck was um, – them uh, street again shooting it on the net and the guy made a save off the side of the post <laughs> so it's ironic that that happened that many times and I think half the building was like oh that's how it went in because everyone else was you know I'm sure some guys are looking at their notes I know some coaches didn't get it players were saying oh no I was going over I just getting to the bench like a lot of people miss that a lot of people did miss it and it's hard to find obviously on video no one can seem to find it we're trying to look at different ways to see if we can capture that thing but um it was a special time and, and real happy for those guys and Kale McLean, who's our penalty kill coach. They do an outstanding job on a day to day basis. So you're happy for that group. And you're closing in on uh, three sellouts this season by the end of the weekend. Combine that with a really strong uh, Friday crowd, including uh, the biggest walk up we've seen around these parts in eons. Uh, are you feeling momentum in the crowd? The home start certainly can't hurt either. Well, you, you certainly feel electric a little bit more. You can notice it when you're on the bench from a coach's perspective. I think the players notice it, just the rumble in the crowd a little bit in the seats. You can definitely feel there's more energy in the building. And I think a lot of people now, um, because of the new players at this level and the, the experienced guys that have dropped down from the NHL, everybody comes with a little bit of an open-eyedness to say, oh, wow, like that guy did play and he is a really good player. And so it works both ways. Uh, obviously, we enjoy the momentum we get out of our home crowd, but at the same time, in fairness, understand any hockey fan they're here to see the other players too and see what they bring to the table and that's what's great about the American Hockey League. Uh, have you seen any of these players before with the, these big four for the Oilers I know Justin Schultz sort of passed through your backyard but uh, that might not that certainly wasn't real close to your tenure at Wisconsin what do you know about some of these guys? Well, we just know that they're great individual talents. I mean, they're they're very fortunate guys to be in the business where they are and be drafted that high and then not only be drafted as high as they were, just have the individual success that they had right away out of the gates in Edmonton. So, you know, as a hockey coach, you're really, you're really happy for those guys. And then you're really happy that, um, you know, our players on our team get a chance to go against them. And I, what a benchmark for yourself as an individual player developing regardless of your age in the AHL like you want to play someday in the NHL like this is a weekend where you can actually say the matchup is formidable to see where I do stack up against some of the game's best young prospects so uh, we like that um, that challenge that's ahead of us this weekend and, and we look forward to doing the best we can and we'll just stay with it. Your penalty kill has outscored the enemy power play uh, that I can't fathom how that could even be happening this late in the season. You've had three shorthanded goals. You've allowed one power play goal against. One of those has been a major penalty, and you've had, I think, three incidents off the top of my head I can remember where you've had five on threes overlapping for a little bit of time. Yeah, we have. Um, again, I think you know a lot of people have asked the question, uh, we've gotten some continuity. Um, 
uh, from last year. Kale McLean's still running our penalty kill. Um, we've got some guys that are back off of that group. You look to Carter Banks, Quentin Lang, certain guys that are out there. And there's the defensemen of Breen and Pascula. So we're getting some continuity out of those groups. And, and the change hasn't, uh, you know, the year, meaning from one year to the next, hasn't been. Nothing's changed. So we're very fortunate. We've got uh, good coaching going on. We've got really good execution from our killers. And, you know, anytime you have success as a group, everybody buys in as a group. And I think they've done that very well. Um, and uh, it shows. Fans have been buying in as well. We hope they come adorned in red this weekend. It is Rocky Red as the OKC Barons and some hot talent from the Edmonton Oilers show up at the AESC up against a pretty hot heat club that have earned 11 of 12 points on home ice. Thanks for your time, Coach. We'll do it again next week. Sounds good, Ryan. Thank you.